So literally as I was rendering out my OnePlus 7 Pro full review, I realized there was an update that was centered around camera enhancement. So OnePlus finally, or allegedly has fixed the camera performance with the OnePlus 7 Pro here, which in my initial review, I said was okay, you know, a little more than adequate, but not great. So in this video, we are going to revisit the OnePlus 7 Pro's camera and see if OnePlus actually made a difference with this update. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look at some photos and videos captured by this phone with the update. Alright, so to begin with the photo analysis here, I have images captured by the OnePlus 7 Pro with the update here on the left, and images captured by the Pixel 3 AXL here on the right. As we know, the Pixel 3 line has some of the best cameras or the best camera setup on the market for photography, so I thought that'd be a great benchmark to compare the 7 Pro to. Alright, so to compare these first set of images here of this BMW logo, um, this is a similar trend to what I saw last time, although I won't speak too soon because I haven't seen all the photos yet. Um, OnePlus is a little bit overexposed here and a lot flatter compared to the very contrasty, clarity-filled Pixel 3a image. The 7 Pro's picture here is not bad at all. Um, it's actually nice to look at, you know, isolated by itself. It's not a bad image, but if we're going to compare here, um, the uh, Pixel 3 definitely wins it out here. It has better exposure, better contrast, clarity, and just the colors. Just everything pops a little more, but we've yet to see more, so let's continue here. And the similar story continues here. Uh, Pixel takes a little colder images here, a little bit better exposed. Um, OnePlus is a bit overexposed here, as you can see in the white flowers. The petals are not as well defined, but I mean, like, it is a warmer image with the OnePlus, and it is a flower, so I actually kind of like that aspect a little bit better. Both images seem to be pretty sharp here, especially when you look at the leaves and you see all the ridges and like the little edges on the leaves themselves. I actually think in this case that both phones do something right and the other one something wrong. I think the Pixel's image is a little bit too blue, not warm enough for an outside tone. The OnePlus's image looks a little bit more true to life. However, you know, you do lose detail with the flower petals once again. So yeah, that's kind of the criticism I have for both these photos. Both are, of course, pretty great for what they are. Moving on to this third image, exposure on both seem pretty great, although there is a little bit more sharpness and clarity once again with the Pixel's image again, and also, you know, a little bit more of a blue tone. And the bokeh effects are of different intensities with these pictures. Um, obviously, Google has a more intense one because it's completely done by the computer or AI or whatever. Um, with the OnePlus, it is done not only by software, but by hardware with the telephoto lens. So I guess when it comes down to this image, I mean, it comes down to sharpness, I think, a little bit. And mostly that bokeh effect, if you want more, go with the Pixel. If you don't really care, you don't need that much you know, control or depth, then the OnePlus 7 Pro should suit you just fine. Moving on to this next pair of images here, this is very interesting. A OnePlus managed to get better dynamic range than the Pixel here. The Pixel's image is a lot darker, a lot bluer, but as you can tell here, the OnePlus managed to get a lot of the detail with the trees. Maybe it's an exposure issue, but in this image, in, in particular, the dynamic range is just much better with the 7 Pro, so that is actually pretty impressive. OnePlus wins this round, definitely. Here's another portrait shot done, or portrait shots done by both these phones um, with the OnePlus. It's a little bit more exposed, not overexposed in this image, but the image looks a lot more flat, a lot softer. Uh, still a great image, I think, but then with the Pixel, you just get a lot more post-processing, a lot more contrast, you know, more of a cooler tone. It's sharper, and the bokeh effect is a lot more defined, so I guess I would say the Pixel 3a's image looks a lot better here, but again, bokeh and background blur, depth of field is kind of an artistic, you know, thing, so it's really up to you whether, you know, you want more or less or more control, but I do think that Pixel 3a actually beats out the OnePlus 7 Pro here in terms of its camera prowess. Moving on to night mode photos, which didn't really fare well with the last update with the OnePlus 7 Pro. Both of these images look pretty great for being taken in not a great lighting condition. In some ways, I actually like the OnePlus's image better. It appears a little bit sharper. Maybe it was the way I captured the image itself, but maybe not. I think that OnePlus really did clean up their act with this long exposure mode. With this other long exposure image or this set of images here, you can also see that OnePlus managed to squeeze in more dynamic range, especially when looking at the window. You can see the greenery outside. However, the Pixel does clean things up a little better on the inside here. The colors look a little bit more defined. There's more contrast. There's more sharpness. However, both images are pretty great for being taken in a very poorly lit condition. Moving into a set of portrait selfies here, the OnePlus manages to capture something decent, uh, but it's a little bit overexposed and a lot softer than the Pixel's image. The Pixel's image is sharper, and the contrast and clarity is, you know, there much more than that of the OnePlus. The bokeh effect is also much more intense, pretty similar to what we've seen in the past here. The Pixel obviously wins this round, but again, the OnePlus takes a pretty decent front-facing image here, nothing to scoff at really. 
Moving on to a set of indoor shots here, both are kind of hard to tell apart in some ways. However, you know, the trend kind of continues. There is more clarity and contrast with the uh, Pixels image, although it's a little bit less defined or a little bit more subtle. But both images here retain decent sharpness and an overall look, not too much noise for being taken in, you know, like an indoor setting, not the best lighting conditions. And last but certainly not least, let's compare photos taken in these, the worst lit conditions I could find in my house. This is in my basement, right in front of my A-roll setup, and obviously Google's Nightscape or Nightsight or whatever they call it is vastly superior to that of what OnePlus has managed to implement in the OnePlus 7 Pro. But as we saw in previous sets of images, OnePlus really did improve their night mode, so I wouldn't really be super critical here. I mean, with Google focusing so much on the camera and pouring millions into their, you know, really top of the line system there and software, um, OnePlus managed to pull something out of this pretty much pitch black basement scene. So. All right, moving on to the video analysis post update here, we're comparing what is taken with the OnePlus 7 Pro here on the left and the iPhone XS Max on the right, which as we know is one of the best smartphones for video capture. And comparing some 4K video taken in broad daylight, I mean, the OnePlus 7 Pro really does stand up to the more expensive phone here, the iPhone XS Max, which is $400 more. Taking a look at 4K video taken in broad daylight with both these phones, I mean, other than, you know, exposure being a bit off with the OnePlus at some points, you know, a bit overdone, and just the overall image looking a bit softer and less contrasty than the iPhone, I think both of the images turned out really great, especially in terms of optical image stabilization, or just overall stabilization, electronic and optical, if that is the case. You can also see that OnePlus uh, offers a bit more of a warm image, so if you like that, then maybe OnePlus is the right phone for you if you're not super particular about smartphone video. I also noticed that the OnePlus 7 Pro's autofocus is better than that of the iPhone, especially when quickly approaching objects that were in the background, bringing them to the foreground. We're moving on to some video that was taken inside my garage in you know, kind of poorly lit conditions here uh, with both phones. I actually think both are really nicely captured. Um, the only thing I will say is that I think the colors look a little bit better with the iPhone, uh, but again, OnePlus does uh, outperform the iPhone in terms of um, a dynamic range when you look out the window here. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, despite that there might be a little bit more grain with the OnePlus 7 Pro, both appear to capture more than usable and pretty comparable uh, video quality within this poorly lit space once again. And last but not least, let's compare a front-facing video here captured by both devices, and it's a similar story. OnePlus captures a less sharp image, it's a little bit more flat, but you know, colorful and nice to look at nonetheless, but iPhone does outperform it in terms of dynamic range, contrast, and the stereo audio does make it a lot better. Stabilization though on both devices are on par, and you shouldn't really have any issue recording front-facing video anyway. I mean, like this isn't a feature that most people use all the time, but if you're vlogging, you might want to get the iPhone and spend the extra money for the better audio and just the better image quality. But again, OnePlus here, especially with this update, does manage to push out really decent, more than adequate looking image. And that's how I'm going to wrap up this camera revisited video here. I mean, the OnePlus 7 Pro gives you such a run for your money. It gives you an amazing, pretty much notchless display, incredible performance and build quality. And, you know, the software experience is just something else. And the camera, although it's not the best in the market, has gotten, you know, better in a lot of cases, especially with the night mode and just the overall look. I think it has definitely improved. However, like I predicted in my review, um, it's not gonna be as good as the top dogs just yet. OnePlus has more money and R&D to put into their camera setups, but that's to be understood. I mean, you're paying less and I mean like that's not the central focus of this phone you're buying the performance and the build quality and the software experience and thankfully the camera at least post update seems to be more than good enough so if you're buying this phone and you're worried about camera performance but you're not you know super intense you know you're not like a professional photographer who expects like pixel level image quality and iPhone level video this phone is a great bargain and you're gonna be happy with the image quality that you get I think and that's you know coming from someone who has you know a lot of perspective using some of the best smartphones in terms of uh, image quality and video quality Quality. So yeah, that about wraps things up. I hope this video helped you out. I really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions or suggestions, and subscribe for more content like this. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one. See, I pointed in the right direction this time, because like the pop-out camera is like kind of over. Whatever. Bye. <laughs>